Well, Mr. Goat's happy. I'm happy because we're big Federer fans. The whole tennis world is pretty happy with this draw. We have Mr. Goat appears to be drawn to my Chinese good luck charm given to me by one of my favorite all-time tennis students. Me and Mr. Goat are very thankful, so there's no better time to play the best Wimbledon song, the only Wimbledon song. And we'll take a look at some highlights from the draw during the song. Without further ado, thank you, Mr. Wimbledon. Thank you, Mr. Wimbledon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Same shoe? Is it not the same shoe? Thank you. I wanna thank you, Mr. Wimbledon. I said I thank you. I'm gonna thank you, Mr. Wimbledon. So thank you. Leave it to me to have not much time one of the most important shows of the year. But we do have some comments from the last video here. And of course, we have the men's Wimbledon draw. Uh, we were maybe going to do the women's racket, bracket, but uh, we flipped for it because we only have time for one. And we spun for it. Was it M or W? And it was, oh, it was W, which stands for women. It was M. So therefore, we go with the men's draw today. Welcome to Coffee Break Tennis, the fastest growing tennis talk show in El Mundo. Wimbledon, too. I am your host, Matt Bradshaw, noted tennis enthusiast, not just noted for my extraordinarily high tennis IQ, but also noted for a sick obsession with one Roger Federer, as a comment pointed out on the last show. So we will go through the draw. Uh, we will pop up some of Ollie's uh, seed projections, as usual. Ollie, who we are very thankful for over on the Twitters. And, uh, and, you know, a lot of times, I don't think those seeds will get there. So we will go right through the draw with photographs. Photographs. We will go zooming into the draw. Most of the draws, there's too much. You go to the Wimbledon app, you can't hardly see it. It's too big to see it all. But we will use Zoom technology to go where no tennis show has gone before and look under the hood with the microscope at the inner workings of this Wimbledon 2019 men's draw. And, of course, we'll get to some comments. It is Wimble time, so we've got all white for Wimbledon. Let's go right into the draw. Page number one. We start with the numero uno, Novak Djokovic, the number one seed, number one ranked player in the world. Put it on the screen. These are the uh, projections that Ollie has, the seeds. <clears throat> but a big one here. Who is he seeded to face in the fourth round? It's on the screen, so you know you're laughing at me. I think it's Monfils. But Monfils is the 16th seed. The 19th seed is in that little section there. And that's Felix Oje, Oje, Aliasim. And that's who I think we'll probably see, just based on how he's been playing on grass. He's been, he's looked great on grass. Now, this is his first time playing at Wimbledon. So who knows for sure. But now put the actual zoom in to the quarter of Joker you'll see my horrible chicken scratch. A lot of question marks. A lot of times, uh, some matches, I didn't even take the time to really think too hard about who's going to win, but I did make a lot of guesses, as you can see here. And I've got Gulbis coming through to the third round because a lot of people, a lot of Fed heads are saying, um, Kyrgios will beat Nadal in the second round. Yes, we do have a crazy a potential second round. Nick Kyrgios and Rafa Nadal, the rematch, which we all hope we get. This is Everyone's going to be talking about this for a whole week now. That's going to be, like, the number one thing people talk about. Also, the women's draw is pretty wild, too. I think um, uh, Yelena Ostapenko will face in the first round uh, Sway Shea Sway. Is that her name? Shea Sway from Chinese Taipei. One of my all-time favorite tennis players because, uh, you know, she's like a regular person out there playing amongst the pros with her strokes, as you know. 
So we'll be talking about uh, that a lot. And some people say, oh, Nadal's going down in the second round to Kyrgios. And Ernest Golbus, who has been good on grass, can take out Djokovic in the third round. Well, I don't have that. I have a, you know, this isn't the easiest draw for Djokovic. This, I would say the Federer draw, thank you, Mr. Wimbledon, the Federer draw is better than the Joker draw. The Nadal draw gets very easy towards the end, maybe. We'll see how it shakes out. But uh, right in the middle of it, Nadal will run into some trouble. How about, I think Nadal has uh, Marin Cilic in like uh, the fourth round or the quarterfinal. That's that's not good for Raw fans out there. But Djokovic and Cole Schreiber, not the easiest first round. You know, it could be much worse than that. Cole Schreiber, uh, did he beat Djokovic on clay this year, or did he come this close and blew it and really should have beat him? Or did he come this close and blew it and then beat him later somewhere else? I can't remember. But uh, the the cold pickle, the cold pickle, cold pickle, uh, not the easiest match for Djokovic first up. He loves playing on the grass, and uh, he, he's got a great game. One thing, uh, interesting thing, thing about Cole Schreiber is that he has a backhand grip. As you know, he has a one-handed backhand, and he hits his one-hand backhand, and then he's such a semi-Western grip on the forehand. The same side, because normally, you know, me and Federer, we use the same grips. We do a lot of the same stuff. Uh, we hit the forehand here, and then we flip our grip and hit the backhand on the other side. Most players hit the ball with different sides of the racket. Uh, Cole Schreiber, he hits his backhand here and then just flips it over, same side, hits his forehand there too. So uh, not having to switch your grips, maybe that helps a little bit on grass where you have a little less time to get ready for the ball and uh, get under that low bounce. Next up, Kudla, Dennis Kudla for Joker if he gets through the cult pickle. And uh, Dennis Kudla, another guy where you think, okay, no big deal, that's an easy draw, but this is a guy who likes to play on grass. If Djokovic is way off, having a horrible day, it could get interesting. We doubt that'll happen. Ernest Gulbis, Ernie Gulbis, the pilot. Get my childhood <laughs> dream to be a pilot. I'm a, I feel like a pilot right now. Well, it was his dream to be a pilot, to be, to be exact. Uh, Golbus could be, again, another tricky match. Uh, it, it depends a lot on... Didn't Golbus have a pretty good run last year? Would he go down to Del Potro in like a long five-set match and it looked like he was going to win? Or am I thinking of 2017? I just remember watching Golbus... Or is it Nisha Kaur? I can't remember, but I remember watching Golbus have a pretty good run at Wimbledon the year last year or the year before and then uh, kind of blew it. I think he got injured, actually. I think he fell. And then after that, everything went downhill for him late in the match where it looked like he was going to win. Anyways, uh, how good will Gulbis be in the third round? That's the question. If Joker has a bad day and Gulbis has the best day he's had in a while, you could have an upset. But again, fourth round, you'll see in the quarters. I have a question mark because I'm not quite sure. Does Oje, Oje, does he get there and does Joker beat him? Uh, Felix Oje, he kind of strikes you as a guy. By the way, there was a comment that used the word gravitas. Oje has a certain, for a new, a young guy, a first-timer here, he has a certain gravitas about him, like a young Rafa, where you think, hey, maybe this is a guy who could actually win it on his first try. If anyone was going to do that, this seems like one of those guys. It's been a while since we had a guy like Nadal where you thought, as an 18-year-old, maybe he could win it on his first try. Of course, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but Oje and Joker, fourth round, I don't know. Uh, obviously, I have Joker making it to the semifinal, so... If I have to pick, I'm going to go with Joker, but I don't feel comfortable picking there because we don't know how Joker will be serving, and we already know OJ is serving pretty well. Uh, below that, who will be in the quarterfinal if Joker does get through OJ? OJ, uh, Steph Sitsipas. He's got uh, Fabiano. Okay, no big deal. How about Ivo Karlovic in the second round, potentially? That could get real tricky. Um, Kyle Edmund or Jauma Munara? Is Jerry Seinfeld going to beat Kyle Edmund here? I don't think so. Maybe. Dirty Dan almost beat Kyle Edmund the other day. It looked like it was going to be no problem. Then Kyle Edmund all of a sudden turned it on. That's the thing with grass. You got a lot of you got a big serve and a big forehand like Kyle Edmund. And you turn it on. You can do a lot of damage. Just got to be a, a little consistent, please. So Steph goes through Dr. Evo. I would say probably yes. But again, Steph has a bad day. Slipping and falling, sliding and gliding. Could be trouble. David Gofan, the gopher. You'll notice I have the gopher coming through. I have him getting through Jeremy Shardy. Then I have the gopher, David Gofan, getting through Medvedev. And he'll have to play pretty well to do that because Medvedev is uh, no easy task here. And then he becomes cousin fed. I think gopher lifts the level, gets through Medvedev, feeling good. He becomes cousin fed. Question mark again. Who wins? Cousin fed, gofan at his best, or Stefanos Tsitsipas? 
I don't want to call him Baby Fed because we all know how that works out. Speaking of Baby Fed, where's he at? OJ, OJ, we'll have to play um, Popsicle. <laughs> I put a star there because uh, how about that? Welcome back, Popsicle. Here's a Canadian that we all like better than you now. <laughs> no offense to the Popsicle. He seems like a swell guy. But uh, was complaining about first-round prize money, looking like he's going to get it this time around. Which I don't blame him. I would complain about the first round. Pr well, I probably wouldn't. I'd be thrilled to be at Wimbledon, and I wouldn't have a coach. I don't need a coach. I already am a coach, okay? Okay. For little kids. <laughs> if Grigor Dimitrov can get through this uh, Corentin Mutet guy, who, who, who could be tricky? No guaranteed Grigor gets through him. Any qualifier has, uh, has won a few rounds already, so keep that in mind. Like, if a wild card goes up against a qualifier... Usually, if you're going to put money down on it, go with the qualifier because they've already uh, been battle-tested on the grass. Now, at Wimbledon, it's a little different because you don't play at Wimbledon. No. Wimbledon, too distinguished. They got their own seeding formula. Of course the qualifiers don't actually play there. Keep off the grass. Go down there with the bums. But still, despite that, I take, take a qualifier over a wild, over a wild card. Uh, Grigor Dimitrov, if he gets through Mutet, the qualifier... He will get Oje Oje. Oje Oje already handled him like he was uh, a thing of the past. And I like Grigor. Uh, let's pop down to the quarter below that. K, A, and Big Z. Uh, Sasha Zverev and Kevin Anderson. This is their section. Uh, Yanko, Yanko Tipsarovic, if he gets through Yoshihito Nishioka, he will have to play Kevin Anderson. If Kevin Anderson can get through Air Bear, who's been playing well in the grass, uh, I hope for Kevin Anderson and his points. That he gets to hold on to some of them and gets through Air Bear. Tip Sarovich, I like him. This is a surface where the way he's playing now, Tip Sarovich has admitted that he can't play defense like he used to. He's had so many freaking injuries. He has to be more aggressive. This is a good place to try it out. Maybe he can do it. Uh, could he beat Kevin Anderson? I doubt it. I got Copel coming through. I mean, come on. Who knows? Some of these guys, you know, you haven't seen them play in a little while. Who? It's kind of a guess. Kevin Anderson should get through there, but I like Miloš to come through and take out K.A. in the fourth round. Stan can get through. Will Stan beat Riley Opelka if Riley Opelka gets through his first round? Uh, Robin Haas are pretty good on grass. Miloš will get through him. I pick Miloš through Opelka if Opelka beats Stan. I'm not sure about that. That's kind of a guess just because, like I said though before, Stan looks pretty good right now. But uh, dealing with the Opelka serve is no fun. Feli Lopez actually has a pretty good draw here. And assuming he can keep the form he just showed us at Queens Club, the guy, his best results have been at Wimbledon. I think he's been in the quarterfinals three times throughout his career. I would love for him to finally get past the quarterfinals, especially because this is probably his last Wimbledon run. And I have Feli doing that. Yeah, part of it's because I'm a fan of the guy. He seems like a nice guy. And sometimes you make picks because it's what you want, like uh, at the French Open semifinal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most of my picks are based on some kind of logic here and based on actually watching a ton of tennis matches, seeing where these guys are. But uh, I like Feli. I like Feli to get through here. This is a good draw for him. Kakanak could be tough. Got to catch them all, the Pokemaster. By the way, Uniqlo is doing Pokemon-themed shirts right now. So uh, you better get on there before I do and buy them all. Because uh, you know Roger Federer is going to show up on a practice court at Wimbledon with a freaking Pokemon shirt. So have it before he does it. Okay, he had uh, he had Sesame Street stuff last year. Do you see the trend? Get your Pokemon. Sh Uniqlo is not even a sponsor. They don't even give me free shirts. They should. I'm going and paying money for some Pokey shirts, so I'll be ha I'll wear it before Roger does. That's the thing. Oh my God, we got less than ten minutes. Let's hurry up. Oh, tennis. Yes, we are confirmed for six p.m. lesson. Not gonna edit that out. It's real, real life happening here. Got to get a Rolex brought to you by Apple Watch. Apple Watch brought to you by Rolex. Official sponsor of Wimbledon Grass Court Championships. Uh, Steve Darcis, the little Belgian that could. I got him going through Misha Zverev because Misha Zverev has only won like two matches this whole year. I think two. Literally, I think it's two. Uh, Batista Agut will get through. Feli will get through Agut because Feli is a man of destiny this year. Uh, I got Benoit Paire coming through Londero. Could be tricky. Uh, I haven't seen Londero play on grass, but I have watched him on clay a lot this year. Kekmanovic, I got him coming through. Roberto Carballas, Baena. Uh, Pablo Cuevas, I put him through Zoom Zoom Zoomer. I like the guy. Kind of a kind of a guess there. Big Z, Yuri Vesely, a guy that we were told was a, a next-genner of the future. Remember him, Yuri Vesely? Poor guy. 
He qualified. Uh, wouldn't be shocked if he somehow beat Sasha Zverev, but I put Zverev through. I put Benoit Pair beating Sasha Zverev because, uh, again, I like Benoit Pair. Oh, if there wasn't a button, hit lucky you, those who hate the color pop. These but I don't have time to unbutton, so uh, I was going to pop it, but put it back down. Solidarity with Benoit Pair. Pop your color. Uh, Batista Goo loses the Feli. Feli takes out Pear or Sasha Zverev. I like Feli to take out either one of those guys. I don't care who comes through. I got Feli and Milos. I got a question mark. Let's all hope it's Feli. Can the guy get one semifinal at a major in his whole career, please? Talented guy. This is the place where it'll happen. And finally, with not much time left, we will race through the best part of the show and the draw. Sam Query and Dominic team first round. That is... Kind of sucks. Uh, if you'll remember, he took out Andy Murray and made, was it the semifinal? And then he lost to Chilich. And then Federer beat Chilich in 2017, two years ago. Uh, I got Dominic Team going down in the first round to Sam Query. Sure, Dominic Team could win that. Sure, we don't know a whole lot about how Sam Query is, although he's been playing at the Eastbourne Granola Bar Open, who's looked pretty good. Uh, I just put Query in. If I was gonna, If I was going to make a racket bracket, which I'll try to do this weekend, uh, I would go with Query because... You'll miss out on a lot of points if you don't get the points for Query advancing through this draw because it's not a very tough draw there. Uh, Christian Garin, Andre Rublev, I put a star there because kind of tough one to pick. Garin's shown that he can play in grass. Rublev is a guy that's been so hurt. Another one of these next-gen guys that we we're all told is really good. I mean, he is really good. He's got a lot of firepower. Uh, he should be able to win if he plays well. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, I didn't do a lot. This top half of draw is kind of boring. Uh, let's look at Rafa. Rafa and Nick Kyrgios. And look, how about Bernard Tomic and uh, jo Wilfried Songa? So Chapo and Rafa third round. I don't know if Rafa can beat Kyrgios. I don't know if Kyrgios will make the second round. You don't, Literally, we don't know anything with Kyrgios ever. All we know is this picture is funny. Put this on the screen. This is a picture of young Kyrgios. He posted this on his Instagram. Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang Clan fan. Who would have guessed it? I don't know if Chapo... Well, Chapo will get through little Ricardus Barrancas from Lithuania. But I don't know if uh, Chapo can beat Sanga. I'm assuming Sanga beats Tomic, although that's kind of a tricky first round there. One to watch. That's why I put a star there. Uh, this sucks for Rafa, because if he does beat Kyrgios, and who's Rafa got first? Yushisu Yushisugita. If he gets through Yushisugita. And then if he gets through Kyrgios, Chapo, who at the Boodles, I know it's an exhibition, but he beat Djokovic handily, uh, Chapo does have the kind of game where he'll beat anyone on, on a given day on grass, so that's dangerous. Sanga, even more dangerous, probably. Could be Sanga in that third round. Not very good. Dirty Dan is a tricky one to play if that happens, but it looks like it'll be Marin Cilic in the fourth round. This draw sucks. First round for Rafa, pretty easy. Kyrgios, Chapo or Sanga, Cilic. I mean, Chapo doesn't sound too big of a deal, but you never know. He could come out swinging. And then above that, uh, you know, Laszlo Jetta, Jill Simone, good player, Fabio Fonini. Uh, who knows who comes through there? I got coming through this to the semifinal. Query, Oda Cilic, Oda Rafa. We don't know. Maybe even Sanga. Now, with five minutes left in the show, we got to do these comments too. We look at Roger's quarter. Oh, yeah, baby. And Nishikishi's quarter too. Which, again, I hate taking the time to explain my nicknames because sometimes people think they're offensive. Nishikishi is literally what a guy I played tennis with some years ago called Nishikori. Not because he was making fun of him, because he literally couldn't say his name. He would say, Ki Kanishikishi. Ki Kanishikishi. Run that through your head again. The guy's name is Ki Kanishikishi. He would say, or he would say, Ki Nishikishi. He would say it so fast, like, Kanishikishi. He said something like that. It was, I just, I never said anything. I was just kind of, oh, yeah, I like him too. Didn't say a word. Just always remembered that. Because uh, Americans, or I don't know, maybe in the UK too, English-speaking peoples, they cannot say names from other parts of the world. God bless them. Even on Tennis Channel, they can hardly say names. Of course, here, I am a communications expert. I say all of the names nearly perfectly. And if I don't, it's on purpose. Uh, Nishikori's draw it looks pretty good. He can come through to the fourth round. Who will be there is a big question. Uh, I got Mateo and Birdman. I got the Birdman coming through Fritzy Boy. I put a star there because uh, I like the Birdman. And look at the guy. Show a picture of him. He must not be eating much now that he doesn't play and make money anymore. The guy is so skinny now. And uh, the quote from him was kind of sad. He said, like, you know, I'm just basically doing what I can and managing my body the best I can. And if I get to play, you know, I'm happy. 
uh, it sounds like he's really been struggling with injury. Remember, we saw him play at like Brisbane and the Australian Open this year. He looked pretty good considering all that he's been through. And he kind of disappeared again. So I just want him to come through uh, Fritzy boy. Then he gets Matteo Berrettini. Uh, toast. Berrettini comes through. Kushmeister and Isner I have there. Uh, sorry, but uh, Gaspar boy is going down in the first round to John Isner. Um, Isner, does he take up Matteo Berrettini? I don't know. But I do know here in the quarterfinal, it says not him with an arrow pointing at Nishikishi. It's going to be Matteo Berrettini or John Isner in that quarterfinal for Roger Federer. Roger Federer. First up, Lloyd Harris. And then uh, Noah Rubin. Wasn't that who he played in 2017 at the Australian Open? First or second up? Uh, Bublik could be tricky, but I'm hoping for Gasquet to come through there because we all know Gasquet and Roger Federer have an agreement where Gasquet will never beat Roger Federer ever in his career. I got Chorch. Guys dealing with, was it a back injury? I mean, back injuries are no joke. Maybe he's feeling great now, but that was very recently in Halle where he had to pull out of the thing mid-match. Uh, Struffy Struff, I have him coming through. Krajinovic, I have coming through over Schwarty D. Uh, I have Struffster here at the fourth round. Struff, I would have been more scared of, but after seeing Berrettini break him down with the slice backhand and just uh, being a little more solid on his own service games, what do you think Roger Federer is going to do? Be more solid holding serve than Struff, unless it's a really rough day for Roger, and uh, just break the guy down. More solid forehand, slice backhand, that's even better than the Struff backhand, a pretty good slice. Uh, I got Roger Federer coming up against Matteo Berrettini or Isner. Not very easy right here, playing Struff, Isner, Mateo. But we all know it's extremely rare that Roger Federer loses to these big power guys at Wimbledon. He takes all their power and redirects it on that beautiful, pristine center court. And hopefully they don't stick him on a court one like they did with Kevin Anderson last year, which was, uh, I, don't, I don't think it helped Roger. I'm not going to blame it, but I don't think it helped. All right, so there you go. Roger Federer wins the tournament. That is my prediction. I would love to see him beat Rafa in the semifinal. I'm not convinced it's going to be Rafa, but I have my fingers crossed and hope that it is. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's go through a couple comments. We have zero minutes, but we're going to do it anyways. I'll be, uh, maybe I'll be a couple minutes late. The children understand that I'm a very important tennis personality and pundit. <laughs> Number one from Shah, 1695. Interesting draw for Nadal. There are a few names which can make Raw fans feel a bit uneasy, but to be true, his draw is easier than Roger Federer's. Kyrgios may lose in his first round match. Maybe. Shapo, who expects him to bother Rafa? Who expects him to bother Rafa on a Grand Slam match? Yeah, not really me, but it could happen. And Kyrgios, to avoid Nadal? That's not how Kyrgios operates. He would love to play Nadal. He will win, I think. Monica. Monica has a great one. Our friend from Australia. They should keep the seating system at Wimbledon. Despite the argument about grass playing more similar to other services than ever before, grass is still grass. And, therefore, it comes with all the unique features that are specific to playing on grass. Plus, Wimbledon comes with a certain level of prestige as well. So, Wimbledon is still not the same as every other slam. I'm sure, if you ask anyone on tour, what do they want to win? Wimbledon is the answer. Yeah, Wimbledon. Th they can do whatever they want. They're the only tournament where you have a freaking uh, all-white dress code. So, there you go. They got extra power. FDK, FDK. I laughed so much, my gut and jaw ached. That last six minutes was solid gold. After Dustin and Kyrgios in round three, Novak plays Vavrinka, or I think he means Rafa. Right? Am I saying that right? Ah, screw it. I don't have time to look. Vavrinka was in the bottom half, wasn't he? And I said he was going down kind of early. Oh, this is uh, an imaginary draw. An imaginary draw. Novak will play Dustin, then Kyrgios, then Vavrinka, then Medvedev, then Sissipas, then Rafa, then loses the Fed in the final. Beautiful. That's why I put this comment here. I also put it there because someone said I laughs. Someone else said this. So this guy, FDK, FDK, which stands for forget them kids, forget them kids. Psh, I laughed so much the last six minutes, solid gold of the last show. But listen to this one from Yao Antonio. I do think Roger has a great chance, possibly his last great chance at Wimbledon. Surely you must realize that pretty much every tournament, blah, blah, blah. This is what I wanted to say. Let's hope I'm wrong. Also, a general comment on the show. Maybe I'm in the minority. In that case, ignore it. 40 minutes is too long, in my opinion, for a video of this type. I find myself clicking away after half, and potentially I'm missing out on interesting points. Well, according to FDK, FDK, forget them kids. Forget them kids. Be late. The last six minutes, you must have missed it, Yao Antonio, and it was solid gold. Uh, Chop75 says, my dream draw would be Ashley Barty in the final verse, Gaspar Udboy. And after a triple bagel from Gaspar Udboy, never to love will be asked for a comment while we all sing Gaspar Udboy. Dak Rambo1 says, your hair looks great. Always going to feature a comment like that. 
And final comment. And with affection, I will crumple up these comments out of love for the children and for you. Pablo Fernandez says, first round, Federer versus her catch rhymes with Latch, Nadal versus Sanga, and Joker versus Kyrgios. That would be sehr fantastisch. Thank you for watching Coffee Break Tennis. I am off to rush to teach the children tennis. A great game. You should try it yourself. Go to Crunch Time Coaching, our head sponsor, to check out some tennis. Also, go uh, subscribe to us here on the channel. Give us a thumbs up. Go to, why am I adding more stuff to a show? I got to get out of here. My hair's practically on fire. See ya. I've been doing a lot of thinking, looking at that mighty nice draw. I couldn't think of a better way to show my appreciation, other than in the beautiful form of song. So here you go, Mr. Wimbledon. It ain't much, but I hope you like it. Hit the Gino. There.